Coming up on today's show, Tesla gets ready to produce the Model 3, Audi trash talks the competition, Honda does weird little things with children's heads, the Hyundai Ioniq EV begins US deliveries very soon, Volkswagen wants to electrify America, Nissan gets into trouble over cheap devices, Lucid's PR machine sweeps into play, how you can open a Model X front with a screwdriver, Elon Musk's companies stand up to Donald Trump, there's a new self-driving Bolt EV video from GM, EV sales spike in the UK, BYD is crowned the biggest plug-in car maker in the world, and Nikola Tesla gets in a Tesla. All of this and a little more of me next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is funded by the in-stream ads on today's video and by the kind donations of viewers like you. Follow the link at the end of today's video to make a monthly donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign to help keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, February 10th, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and this is TEN, the YouTube show that takes all the worthy news in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transportation, trims off the excess gristle, and leaves you with a perfect bite-sized start to your weekend. And to start today's show, we're off to California, where Tesla has temporarily halted production at its Fremont facility in order to make the necessary retooling tweaks to its production line so it can begin making Tesla Model 3 electric cars. The story, originally broken by Reuters, suggested Tesla would begin building the Model 3 as early as February 20th, just 10 days from now. But according to Tesla's official statement, which it released in response to other news outlet stories, it says that this month's planned production halt won't lead to production models coming down the line anytime soon. Instead, expect the retooled factory to test various Model 3 production parts over the next few months as it begins various engineering and production prototypes before full production later this year. Given that it's still ordering initial parts runs for the Model 3, and various beta test models have been spotted in the wild, including a 70 kWh dual motor Model 3 variant, it's unlikely that we'll see a production model anytime before the start of Q4. What makes a car premium? Is it the brand, the trim, the finish, the build quality? How about the attention to detail? Whatever it is, Volkswagen's premium brand Audi has been trash-talking the Tesla Model X a little this week, with its chief of sales and marketing, Dietmar Wockenreiter, telling the UK's auto car magazine that the 2018 release of its first long-range electric SUV, called the Audi e-tron Quattro SUV, will be the first real premium manufacturer doing a premium electric SUV. This, of course, means that, surprise, surprise, Audi doesn't view the Tesla Model X, or Tesla for that matter, to be a real premium electric car or a real premium automaker. Either that, or there's some trash talking going on because Audi is genuinely scared. You know, like that bully at school who secretly bullied everyone else for the thing they feared most about themselves. Say no more. From premium electric, whatever that means, to hydrogen fuel cells next, and Honda's really weird new marketing campaign for its Clarity fuel cell sedan. The five-seater Honda is its first mass-produced hydrogen fuel cell car, and while it's currently only available in a few limited markets around the world, Honda is pushing the boat out with a massive ad campaign designed to advocate and educate for the brand and fuel cell cars and it's chosen to do so using a series of adverts in which disembodied talking and singing heads, both those of children and adults, are turned into the proton of a hydrogen atom while an animated single electron whizzes around them. In other words, a humanish representation of a hydrogen atom. Yeah, I'm struggling to explain it, so the chances are viewers will struggle to understand it too. Still, one of the ads has kids singing a Fleetwood Mac song, so I guess there's a cute musical number in there or something. One car which doesn't have flashy ad campaigns, meanwhile, is the Hyundai Ioniq EV, which, after officially beginning deliveries in Europe and Asia, is due to begin US deliveries this month. With an EPA-approved range of 124 miles per charge, the Hyundai Ioniq EV will not be able to beat the Chevrolet Bolt EV in the electric car marketplace. But for those who can't afford the Bolt EV, there's hope that the Ioniq EV will be a lot more affordable. And I say there's hope because Hyundai hasn't yet announced pricing. Yes, this is the softest of soft launches, so don't expect a massive inrush of customers with pockets full of cash. Given its range isn't all that exciting, I can't blame Hyundai for launching this as quietly as possible. Still, it's another vehicle to consider if you're in the launch market of California. <coughs> Compliance cars! Anyone? 
as part of its massive fines for building many, many diesel engine cars with so-called cheat devices designed to circumnavigate emissions tests around the world, Volkswagen has finally launched Electrify America, the court-mandated pro-EV program that it's been forced to invest $2 billion in as part of its Dieselgate settlement plan. Over the next few years, the independent program will focus on spending those $2 billion on electric car charging infrastructure across the US, alongside funding electric car advocacy and education. But the site, Electrify America, which just launched this week, is only the start. What's more, Volkswagen is wanting members of the public and other groups to submit their proposals to tell it how to spend those $2 billion. So if you want to say, head over to Electrify America, or we might end up with the usual poorly planned infrastructure frittering of money that we've seen so many times in the past with similar programs. Talking of Dieselgate, Japanese automaker Nissan got its knuckles well and truly wrapped this week when a South Korean appeals court sided with the South Korean government and said that fines levied against Nissan last year for allegedly cheating in emissions testing were valid. Nissan has always maintained it's innocent, but the car in question, a diesel-powered Qashqai, uses a Renault-sourced diesel engine, variants of which have come under fire in Europe for higher than allowed nitrogen oxide emissions. In all of these cases, the allegations center on a sensor which turns off an exhaust gas recirculation system at temperatures in excess of 50 degrees Celsius to prevent overheating, at least normally. That's fairly standard practice, but in the case of the diesel Qashqai, the allegations are that the system turned off the EGR system at just 35 degrees Celsius, meaning it fell foul in emissions tests. To be honest, I'm a little disappointed that Nissan, like every other major automaker out there, is still getting into such trouble over these emissions, especially when it has the solution staring it right in the face. Plug in? Anyone? For the past few years, Lucid, the company previously known as Ativa, has been teasing us with videos of its Mercedes Sprinter test mule setting insane 0 to 60 mile per hour times thanks to its super fast high spec electric drivetrain. And earlier this year at CES, the company began to show off its first production car, the Lucid Air, to interested investors and customers. Well, now Lucid's PR machine has gone into full overdrive, giving select test drives in and around Los Angeles and San Francisco in California, making sure plenty of media get behind the wheel and sharing some truly stunning footage of it undergoing various road tests. With a price tag expected to be in excess of $160,000, the high-end 1,000 horsepower electric car has the tech and the performance to match or even beat Tesla. And unlike Faraday Future, it seems to be a fully finished vehicle. As you can guess, we're eager to get a ride for ourselves, so when we do, we'll let you know if this is a serious contender in the plug-in marketplace or just more vaporware to ignore. Watch this space. As the most advanced car on sale today, the Tesla Model X has automatic everything. Automatic doors, automatic tailgate, autonomous driving, the lot. But when it comes to the front trunk, or frunk, a video went viral this week showing how easy it is to break into a Model X frunk with just a screwdriver. The video, courtesy of well-known YouTuber Alejandro Salomon, who happens to own a massive number of high-end cars, including a Tesla or two, shows that once you've removed a bumper trim panel with a screwdriver, you can indeed open a Tesla Model X front super easily. And it's caused quite a lot of hysteria online. But here's the thing, the Model X is designed to operate that way because gaining access under the hood is required in the event of an accident. That's because the emergency disconnects that keep first responders and everyone else safe are located under the hood, just as they are in the Model S. Is it a big deal that people can get into your car? Well, that depends on if you leave valuables in there. But Tesla is supposed to warn owners of this feature. So really, if you didn't know about it, you do now. Given I've owned plenty of cars with quirks like this, I'm not really all that bothered. How about you? As with last week's show, we're trying really hard here at Transport Evolve to stay out of the political world, unless that political world has something to do with electric cars. And this week it did, when Tesla and Elon Musk's other big company, SpaceX, joined a total of 97 different companies in signing an amiscus brief condemning the White House for President Trump's executive order that intended to halt the issuing of travel and work visas to citizens of seven Middle Eastern countries with predominantly Muslim populations. Musk, who's been part of Trump's business and tech team of advisors, had initially responded to the travel ban by promising to broach the issue with Mr. Trump in a future meeting, and did appear to do just that last week. 
But this week, however, Tesla and SpaceX both joined up to the brief, which originally did not have either firm listed. Either last week chat with 45 didn't go very well, or both companies felt they needed to add their names anyway. Either way, it'll be interesting to see what the reaction will be from Tesla Model 3 reservation holders who cancelled their orders last week in protest of Musk's involvement with the White House and apparent lack of saying anything. I wonder if they'll reinstate their reservation. For almost as long as the Chevrolet Bolt EV has existed, we've been told how GM's first long-range production electric car will play a future in the world of autonomous cars. Indeed, the car was designed from the ground up to one day operate as a fully autonomous vehicle. And this week, GM released the latest in a series of videos showcasing the progress that the recently acquired cruise automation has made to teach the Bolt EV how to drive itself. The video shows the Bolt EV confidently driving itself through the streets of San Francisco, with the driver attentively ready to jump in and help out when required. While it's not production ready yet, it shows in the not too distant future, just like Tesla, Nissan and so many others, electric cars and autonomous vehicles will one day become synonymous with one another. It's taken quite a while, and I'm not sure if me leaving the UK had anything to do with it, but electric car sales in the UK have well and truly taken off. So much so, in fact, that electric cars have accounted for 4.2% of all new cars sold last month. The reason? Well, EV charging infrastructure is on the rise, but so too are attitudes towards electric cars, with cars like the Tesla Model S and Nissan Leaf a mainstay on any major British city. But Renault's new Zoe has helped too with its 41 kilowatt hour lithium ion pack, bringing longer range capabilities within the reach of budget minded buyers for the very first time. And talking of which, used prices are on the drop too, which means that the earliest Nissan Leafs going for as little as £5,000, you don't have to be on a big salary to get behind the wheel of a plug in car. So well done, UK, and here's to an ever increasing market share for plug in cars. Here's a question for you. Who is the world's biggest manufacturer of plugins? You might think that it's Tesla or perhaps the Renault, Nissan and now Mitsubishi alliance, but you'd be wrong. In fact, you'd be wrong if you choose any of the well-known automakers who happen to make plug-in cars, because the actual answer is Chinese firm BYD, which made and sold a total of 100,178 plug-in cars during 2016. Those sales were split fairly evenly between electric cars, just under 47,000, and plug-in hybrids, almost 53,300. But perhaps the most shocking thing is the number of plug-in cars sold by BYD in 2016 is nearly double that of the number of plug-in cars it sold in 2015, showcasing that the Chinese market for plug-in cars is hotting up very, very quickly indeed. So the next time someone tells you that China doesn't have a part in play in encouraging people to dump the pump, be sure to point them at that piece of news. And finally, as many who follow the electric car world will know, Tesla has never really had to spend a whole lot of money on advertising its cars, relying instead on word of mouth, the evangelizing of its existing customers, and epic fan-made commercials that put many an ad agency to shame. Well, last week, a new ad hit the YouTubes that is just such an ad, asking the question, what if Nikola Tesla, the inventor after which Tesla is named, could get behind the wheel of a Tesla Model S? The result is a beautiful piece of filmmaking and, save for the slightly dodgy moustache, is one you'll just want to watch its entirety from start to finish. Beautiful. And as that's the end of the show, you can do that in just a few. But before you do, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, as well as find out more about our Transport Evolved vids on our YouTube channel, which this week includes a peek inside an electric car charging station and an explanation of why you use more energy driving through water than you do on dry roads. And if that's not enough, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and catch up with the occasional news article on the Transport Evolved website. And as always, if you liked what you saw today and want to help us make more shows like this, please consider making a donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign, a link for which is in the description below and at the end of today's show. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next week. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. This was 10. Have a great weekend and until next time, Keep evolving.